but it doesn't mean that there aren't people that God hates. And we see this here in verse number five where it says, the foolish shall not say in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. It doesn't say thou hatest all iniquity. It says thou hatest all workers of iniquity. It's the workers that God hates, which the workers are people. I mean, that's literally what the Bible says. So you may have heard your entire life, you may have heard growing up that God only hates the sin, but he loves everybody. There are people that God hates. And I'll tell you what, there's people that when God hates someone, he doesn't love them. I know it sounds silly, but people want to try to compartmentalize things and just say, well, God just loves everyone all the time and doesn't hate anyone. There's no hate in God. Well, no, it's because people have taken hate to a, too far of an extreme as far as it being like always a bad thing. Now, we aren't supposed to be hateful people that should not characterize who we are. However, there is a time to hate. Like the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time for everything. There's a season for everything and a purpose. And we need to understand what that is. The Bible says here, he hates all workers of iniquity. Look at verse number six. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. And I, if you remember last week, I told you leasing just means lying. It's just an older word that just means lying. Those people that speak lies. The Lord, look at this. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Abhor is a, is a pretty strong word for hatred. It means God really hates the bloody and deceitful man. It doesn't say God will abhor the murderer. God will abhor the murderer, the man. You, you cannot ignore this scripture. If, if you believe that the book of Psalms is inspired of the Holy Ghost, that this is the word of God, we have to deal with this. It has to all make sense. It can't contradict. You know, this God's word doesn't contradict itself. So if you have a belief, if you have a belief system that tells you, well, God would never hate anybody because God is love, but you believe in the inspiration of, the, of, of God's word, you believe that it's, this is the word of God, God doesn't contradict himself. You, you have a contradiction. And if you just think that God cannot hate, because well, we see people God hating, that God hates in this passage. And this isn't the only one. Now, I, I highlight, I, I, I got some notes here, and I did a word study, all the places in the Bible that refer to workers of iniquity, because who the people are that are being referred to that God hates is important. God doesn't just love someone, hate them, love them, hate them, love them, hate them, like just, just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. God loves all of his children first and foremost. I'll tell you that much. If you're born again, God loves you. Now, God may get angry with you. God may have to chastise you and punish you and discipline you. But God does not hate you when you're born again. But there are people that God hates. And we have to understand, when we, when we look at the Bible, try to figure out, well, who is he talking about here? Who is it that God really hates? Well, I, didn't, I don't have every reference in my notes here. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. You can do that on your own if you want. I only pulled out some of them, but none of them are contradictory. So the ones that I don't reference here, it's not like they're saying something just completely different. But check it out for yourself. Um, I'm going to read these for you. You don't have to turn to them all. If you want to flip ahead, there's a few in Psalms I'm going to turn to. You can flip up to Psalm 14. I'm going to read from, from Job 31. Job 31, verse 3. The Bible says, It's not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity. So a strange punishment. It's not a normal punishment. It's a strange punishment is given to the workers of iniquity. And, and some of, a lot of these are just going to reference judgment and punishment on workers of iniquity not necessarily going in depth into who they actually are, but the reason I'm going into this is to show you when God is referring to, when the Bible is referring to workers of iniquity, it's, it's not just your average unsaved person or saved person. This is talking about a specific type or group of people here that are categorized as workers of iniquity. And it'll become more apparent as we start seeing all these various places where it's used. That it's like, yeah, this is definite. There's a, there's a common theme here and a common thread 
being referred to these workers of iniquity. Psalm 14, verse 4, the Bible reads, Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread, and call not upon the Lord? So obviously they're, we can see they're not saved. They don't call upon the Lord. But on top of that, it says they're eating up my people as they eat bread. I mean, that's one of the attributes here of people that hate God's people and are just out to destroy God's people. This is an attribute. Now, this one attribute doesn't mean that if somebody hates God's people that automatically they're this reprobate that falls into this category of a worker of iniquity that, that God hates forever. Now, I will go as far as to say this too, though, is that the wrath of God abides on people prior to being saved, even if they're still savable, right. right? So you think about someone like Saul of Tarsus who persecuted the church, right? He wasn't a reprobate. He wasn't rejected. But God hated him when he was persecuting the church and was, you know, um, doing everything he did. It, he didn't just hate his sin. He hated what he was doing, but yes, but, but he hated him, but he still, he didn't, he didn't utterly hate him and reject him and cast him out forever, right? Because he was still able to find grace in the eyes of the Lord because he did it in uh, unbelief. He did it ignorantly in unbelief. 